guys, Ash here coming at you today in Rage Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video. I'm glad to have you all here with me today. So guys, as you know, I am 100% free to play. Then check this out. All right, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? I'm a freaking whale. I'm a whale. I'm a whale. But today, I'm going to teach you how to kill a whale. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jaws is a Jaws is a shark. Jaws is a shark, Ash. A shark. Much better. All right, guys. So as I told you about a month ago, maybe, yeah, maybe about a month ago, I was at 4,300 Live Arena trophies, and I said, I'm going to start taking Live Arena a lot more seriously. Well, I've learned a few things, right? I've learned a few, a few things along the way here. I'm creeping up on 5,200. I have a ways to go. The cool thing is, is I know right now I'm at 406 in the world. I know I can get top 20 or whatever, but look at the points here. 5,100 to 20,000? I faced this guy like 100 times, by the way, right? Like, it doesn't really make a difference in terms of matchmaking, you know? Uh, but I will say a few things. Number one is they need some sort of a, a season reset. I don't think any of these players are going to want to hear that. Anybody on the leaderboard, because it's like it takes you years <laughs> of, of grinding two hours a day every opening that Live Arena has to make up, because I'm getting four or five or whatever trophies per win, right? And, you know, these are 10,000, 20,000 ahead of me some of these players i think they need some sort of seasonality but the biggest thing that they need in live arena this is not what the video is about but really quickly because i'm going to get to my learnings here the biggest thing that live arena really really needs is this battle rule section right like the thing that's ruining it is this all-out whale contest right and i know this because i'm a whale it's infuriating because honestly live arena is really fun there's a lot of fun counterplay in raid shadow legends guys there really really is it's so different than arena i love it i love it but i wouldn't love it if i did didn't have a stacked account i have the ability to admit that seriously but the reason i wanted to make this video <laughs> finally is yes there's a massive grind in live arena but they need to go in there and, and change the battle rules there needs to be epic only seasons there needs to be rare only seasons separate leaderboards if people want to compete with restrictions and they can rotate it right it's not going to affect their bottom line there can still be a main pay to win leaderboard as well but they can build out the feature vis-a-vis -vis the battle rules to make some really compelling game play that everybody can enjoy not just the top one percent of spenders i mean suckers Sp spenders spenders i mean i mean in the game right like yours truly anyway i've been beaten i wish I, I i didn't screenshot but i wrote down the guy's name right there was a guy a few nights ago his name was nicholas m that's n-i-k-l-a-u-s-m from l-a-w-r clan wrote his name down because like i had a lot of respect for him he beat me drafting a bunch of epics right Plus four fully awakened epics, but epics nonetheless. And I thought to myself, this is actually a really good video because what do you do, even if it's not live arena, if it's classic arena, but you just want to push because you're sick of doing the same thing all the time and you want to actually compete, see how high you can get, right? What do you actually do if you can't compete with the freaking Krakens in this game, right? What are you supposed to do? Well, first off, there's no easy, simple solution because you have a huge advantage to spend in this game. Newsflash, right? You're playing a game that the damn category is called gotcha. You know what I'm saying? That all being said, there are tools you can use. And I'm going to take an example from Nicholas M, who was the dude who beat me with epics, right? What you want to do is, first of all, you don't want to lean super hard into the meta, right? I want this to apply to everybody out there, like 99.999% of my viewers. Meaning if you are a spender, but you're going against, because even me, like I have a disgusting pay to win account. But I have, you know, a couple a couple empowered mythicals on my account, right? And I have a couple fully awakened mythicals. But sometimes I go up against people with plus four fully awakened on every mythical, you know? So even if you're one of the top spenders in the game, there's already if you spent ten thousand dollars in your lifetime on this game, there's gonna be a guy who spent half a million dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I rich? Am I poor? So I think this can appeal to everybody, whether you're free to play, whether you're a low spender, a medium spender, or a high spender, you might have to pull one of these tools out of your, your arsenal to compete with somebody who's clearly a pay to win like yours truly. So one is using off, off meta is the way to go. Because think about it. These guys are going against the same 
champions every match in the arena, even if it's classic arena, it's going to be the use case is going to be the same, right? For the most part, it's going to be a lot of Armanses. It's going to be a lot of Galathiers. It's going to be a lot of Crixies. It's going to be a lot of Harimas, White uh, King and Queen, Narciss and, and, and White Queen and Korra, uh, uh, Taras and Marichkas, uh, some Alas is thrown in there. We talked about Harima. There's going to be maybe some Nutcracker thrown in. There's going to be a lot of Siegfried but basically you know a lot of Lazarius but I basically just named most of the meta of course I didn't do super comprehensive you know Siffy and whatnot there's a few that I left out but I would recommend if you're not a big spender sure use those champions if you have them obviously right you have Taurus and Mariska you're going to be using them right so lean into the awesome champions that you do have but make sure to sprinkle in a little bit of off meta because what players are not used to is facing champions they don't face a hundred times a day you know, and guild versus guild is coming inside the game, clan siege, whatever it's going to be called, guild siege, clan siege. And you might have to employ some of these tactics in that. At the time of this recording, we don't know all the nuances to what it's going to be like, but this is why I wanted to make this video right now is because it doesn't pertain to just live arena. It can pertain to anything, any sort of game mode where you're paired against somebody else who spent more than you have in the game, right? All right. So go off meta is tip number one. Utilize champions that have block revive fenax is the obvious choice right fenax foley inithwi blood twin uh, more to macabre blood gorge right these are the type of champions that can turn you're looking for these x factors that can you know get over the hump the, the spending hurdle right and then help you land that knockout blow and stop them from doing what the heck they want to do what they're used to doing every match you can catch them off guard a little bit right these whales right so a fenax is a great example what you want to do with fenax is is ideally protect him maybe in stone skin but i'm going to assume you're going into almost every battle assuming you're not going to win the speed race right so stone skin is going to be the way to go get some protection on your champions right Really, I wouldn't even hesitate going all four of your champions in stone skin, right? Uh, I know that I was slow to come around in the beginning of stone skin. I would put it on one champion, maybe two, but I didn't make a practice of, as I got more of it, just starting to load my whole team up because that's really hard. I mean, go against an all stone skin team and it's really hard to, get to deal with, to contend with. Anyway, on Fenex, you want to build them kind of tanky, but then you really want to put them with an ally attacker. If you have Lady Makage, congratulations. You have the best ally attacker in the game, in my opinion, right? These parties bore me to death. But it doesn't matter who necessarily, just put them with an ally attacker and then target. Even if they have a UDK on the team, you can still target who you want to ally attack and you can literally put them down and deny revival. It's a great way to get rid of a Sun Wukong. He'll never come back. But it's a better way to get rid of their nuker and they'll never come back. This is a very revive heavy meta right now, right? Star Sage, uh, uh, Siffy, obviously. Lazarius has a revive on his base form. And there's a billion other revivers from Duchess on down that are utilized depending on what league you're in and where you are right where you're competing there's a lot of revivers so having a deny revive is better than ever and there's not a lot of popular deny revives inside the meta right now uh there's really just not i would say mezamel is probably one of the most popular ones where i am right now she doesn't even hit that hard but she has a self-buffing ability with a block revive on the a2 you throw in like attack percentage on the boots in stone skin and you just wait for her turn, you self buff and you take somebody out like a Harima because she's spirit affinity. I don't want to talk about a, I don't mean to talk about a mythical here, but you guys get what I'm saying. You know what uh, deny revive options you have. Another champion who I absolutely love, and I made a video of him talking about Sun Wukong recently, is I think that Hefrak is a great option for players out there if you're lucky enough to have him. He's a legendary, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on him, but Hefrak in Stone Skin is very difficult to deal with, right? He's gonna go in there, he's gonna be just Hefrak Scorn, Hefrak Scorn, Hefrak Scorn, especially if you have uh, a slower build on Hefrak, go ahead and put attack percentage boots on him. Go all out damage and don't concern yourself a ton with his speed. Yeah, we do eventually need him to go, right? We want him to take a turn, we want him to reduce the cooldown on his passive, but oftentimes you can get by with using one turn of him after he takes his turn with Stone Skin on and building him nice and slow and just killing him everybody as soon as somebody else on your team dies with a prince of pride passive it's going to instantly activate as a2 and it's not going to put it on cooldown you can wipe out a really solid pay to win mythical team just using half rack and somebody dying on your team preferably like a sun wukong that way he comes back to life as well there's a lot of these disruptor 
champions out there that I feel like people underutilize, right? Tormund's another one. He's an old school one, right? Tormund, he's really good at disturbing what the opponent is doing. Probably... When you talk about the, the best disruptors in the game, a lot of them are are free, right? There's Tormund's the exception, right? Tormund's hard to get, but he's going to be freezing. He's going to be annoying your opponents. If you if they draft in a way in live arena, or if you know because of classic arena or clan siege or whatever, if you know that you're going against no stone skin, don't be afraid to put in a hegemon, right? Put in a hegemon. Do that damage and try to pop somebody off before the battle even begins. He's not a meta champion, but he's not bad in the right circumstance, right? And we look at all the best disruptors in the game in terms of basically, you know, I love disrupt. I, I play disrupt in the game, right? I try to I try to go heavy on the Armanzas, the Sun Wukong, but this is what I mentioned them. Armands, these are not in the off meta, but Armands, Sun Wukong, like as meta as meta can be in the game right now. But with Armands and Sun Wukong and Lady Mikage, right? Lady Mikage, she's all disrupt on her second form. She's got buff removal. She's got weaken. She got stun, turn meter, uh, and sleeps as well, right? So those three champions, Sun Wukong, Armands, and Lady Mikage, they're all not free to play friendly per se, because you need legendaries to fuse Mikage. Ooh, perfect. <laughs> But they're either former fusion, former freebie, or a somewhat accessible mythical, right? Uh, you should be using all three of those, I think. I think they're all like SSS tier. You're probably already aware of that. Uh, there's another tactic that you guys can use. I've shown a few of my favorites here, but let's just give an old school one, right? You can put a Cardinal on the team. Uh, Cardinal's great. I mean, she has this redemption. She's the only reviver in the game that... The turn meter to max means as soon as she revives them, they go. They go. You'll notice on like a Siffy, for example, right? There's a lot of them. Turn meter to max, right? Or, or full turn meter. Uh, revive with a full. Let me just pull her up. <laughs> Get their exact, exact verbiage right here. When she comes with a full turn meter, 55% HP full turn meter, doesn't necessarily going to guarantee they go next, right? Usually the enemy team's already going to have somebody that goes next uh, that was ready to go after queued up behind Siffy anyway, or anybody with a full turn meter, but not with Cardinal with Redemption. So if you can go in there and, you know, two or three allies are dead, sometimes you can win the match right there using a Cardinal, right? She can really turn the tide. So you can build her super slow in Stone Skin. Everybody comes back to life and they go immediately, right? So it's a really strong ability you can use. You can also use stall tactics right stall tactics are tactics are really good when you know you can't win a speed race in raid shadow legends what is a good stall tactic obviously you can go in there with a torment of sun wukong uh armands a strategy like that sure that's kind of more like controlling not stalling stalling is when you go against one of these super good pay to win teams right it's a little bit more challenging now with mythicals in the game but a lot of these teams are not built to last necessarily a long, long, long time. It just depends on what you're going against. If you go against a Siffy Galathir team, it's built to last a damn long time. It's built to last forever. But a lot of the teams, you know, Shuzen, the, the Valorous is very popular right now. Arbiter is getting a little bit more play as well. Some of these squishier go first, super speedy teams, right? A lot of these teams are not built. If you can withstand their first onslaught, so to speak, right? I'm not saying you can beat the number one player in the game with this, but if you can under, if you can withstand that first onslaught with like, a Vogoth in a, in a in a bolster set, provided you're not going against uh, King Narcissus, right? Uh, but a, a Vogoth, very slow. A UDK, you, you put Vogoth and UDK on a team, I mean, and then two-piece stone skin on everybody on your squad, you can kind of just sit back, relax a little bit, right? Especially if you have a little bit of polymorph on your team. You can let the opponent you know, do whatever they want to do. Use all their best skills and abilities, and then you can go in and kill them afterwards, right? When they don't have their stone skin or whatever, because your team is so dang slow, you can parlay this with a higher resist strategy. Again, not a lot of resist teams out there. And there's another whole category that I need to talk about before I let you guys go. This is a great way to beat, to kill a whale. A great way, guys, is using bombs, man. Bombs in this game right now I don't feel like they're used quite enough. 
They're very fast too, right? And there's three amazing bomb champions to use in PvP right now. There's probably more if you conclude, uh, Shaz you can use Shazar easily as well. But Nishak is great because he has the back-to-back -back turns and a lot of damage, and he's just a monster, a beast himself. Uh, we all know Gaius, the Gleeful, right? He's nice because you add some control in there too. He brings a sleep. But my favorite, actually, my favorite uh, in the entire game for PvE, believe it or not, is the oldest, and that's Astrolith. I think that Astrolith is incredibly good you can do some really nasty things with her she also brings a speed uh in arena battles so a great speed lead she brings a turn meter boost on her a1 but this heart rot it's two bombs that detonate after one turn that can't be resisted okay and then her a3 is nasty judgment is exchanges hp levels with an enemy then attacks them with the default skill that default skill also fills a turn meter of a random ally by 15 percent all allies by a further 15 percent as long as the attack is critical she's attacking with that ability on judgment where she's exchanging hp levels with an enemy that can't be resisted okay so and then an extra turn decreases the cooldown of the skill by three turns if their hp drops below 20 percent when attacked and she has good multipliers too so what you can do with astrolith right and again i i, I hate to be so focused on a legendary here but you can pop somebody off with a bomb. It can't be resisted. So you want to aim. This is a great response. Bomb is such a good response to stone skin. There's only one champion. Really two, I would say. You have to be careful of with bombs. Marichka with the block damage. And Star Sage Galathir because he's not going to die to the bomb. He's going to heal himself back up. And then revive or cleanse everybody else. Other than that, you know, for the most part in terms of meta... You're going to be great with this, okay? You put the bomb on somebody, can't be resisted. It detonates, it kills them. There's two of them. You can use like a Vizier or Velos or somebody to spread the bombs if you want to, but you don't have to. On the next turn, you go, you, you know, hopefully she, she's pretty squishy, right? Hopefully she has kind of low HP, right? You just swap HP levels with an enemy. You kill them. And again, ideally, their their HP is dropping below twenty percent, just not even with the attack, right? Just with the, just with the HP exchange. If you pick the right target, depending on her HP, right? And then you can get the extra turn on top of that, right? And more turn meter fill. I've spent way too long talking about Astrolith, but she's a really, really good champion to battle Stone Skin, which is really, really popular right now, obviously inside PvP. So that is how we kill whales in this game. And I've been a victim. I've been a dead whale myself, and it's worked against me. So off meta, block, revive, stall and disrupt teams, cardinal, a lot of control, Tormund, Hegemon, use those outside the box strategies, some unorthodox or lesser popular champions, and you can kill a whale. Sadly, not every time. The odds are not going to be in your favor. But to me, these are the best way to kind of even the odds and give you a shot at taking down, being the David that takes down the Goliath and Raid Shadow Legends. Hopefully you found this video helpful, guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, guys.